The year is 2024, Tekken 8 just dropped, and it is easily the best Tekken, or dare I say the best fighting game the world has ever seen in 2024. In terms of its core gameplay aspect, the 1v1 fighting game style in ranked, be it locals or such. But today we're not even here to talk about that. Today we're going to be talking about Tekken 8's story mode, The Dark Awakens. Now, Tekken as a fighting game has never been known for its incredible story. In fact, uh, Tekken in general, ever since the early days of Tekken 3, Tekken 5, and Tekken 6 eras, the story has been always on more of the comedic side. If anything, the story has always been kind of whack, if you ask me. With the whole... Mishima Saga being the core of the main story. However, in Tekken 8, that all changes. In my personal opinion, Tekken 8's story was pretty well done. It did have a lot of cliches, it did have a lot of the uh, classic anime tropes of believe in your friends, friendship, all that shonen type elements. But overall, it did not have that many plot holes, and although I am a competitive Tekken player myself, I, I spam ranked nearly every day. I must address the few and far between plot holes that are in the story. Now just like everything, Tekken 8 story mode and overall story is never perfect. There are quite a few plot holes and things that don't make sense. There are a few major ones that I can point out. The first one being is, why is Azazel so weak? He's literally the devil progenitor and nearly in every time we see him in a story mode, he's getting his ass wrecked by some Mishimas or you know, the general cast. There are quite a few more like, where's Armor King? Where's Kunimitsu? Where, where's Bob? Where's Bob? I never thought I would be saying this, but where the hell is Bob? Like, Slip Bob was a thing in Tekken Tech Tournament 2, and, and Bob was there in Tekken 6 to make things very OP. Tekken 7, he was just kind of chilling. And don't even get me started on the main storyline plot holes like, has Jin and his friends like Xiaoyu not known about Ogre and Tekken 3? What happened at the end? But all that aside, Today, I really want to just focus on one element that has been bugging me since the very beginning of when I finished the story mode, and we're going to refer to the final battle of the Tekken 8 story mode. Not the one where it's true Devil Kazuya versus Angel Jin, but the final battle down on the rocks. Why didn't Kazuya kill Jin when he had the chance? For those of you who may need a little bit of a refresher if it's been a while since you've played the Tekken 8 story mode, in the final battle, Jin and Kazuya come falling down from a rock slash meteor thing, and they basically it's the final it's the final fight. It's the it's the one where there's like crashing waves and a ship in the background. There's like a fire happening in a nearby forest. Yeah, you guys know this one. It's it's, it's the trailer fight. So Jin and Kazuya kind of duke it out, and uh, Jin basically employs all his training, his Mishima style, his Kazama style, and uh, Tekken Tree really broken stuff like the just frame laser scraper laser sorry not, not even Tekken 3 that's that's Tekken 4 the Tekken 4 laser annihilator back back forward 212 unblockable it was crazy the, the fight was crazy the emotions ran high I might I might have shed a manly tier or two but that's between the two of us but the most important thing that I find is that at one point Kazuya eventually gets the upper hand he basically kicks Jin all the way to this rock where he slams his face into it absolutely brutalizing him. It's basically treating him like it's his, it's his adopted son or something like that. Gives him the beatdown of the of a lifetime. Jin is just kinda taking it all in, you know, I, I think he's so he's so tired and beaten at this point he can't put his hands up to save his life. And Kazuya is just basically comboing the crap out of him. And then we get this line. <laughs> And he pauses for a second before actually, you know, hitting Jin in the head. I, I assume we don't really get to see the shot. Maybe maybe he punched his balls or something like that. I don't know. Electric wind ball fist. And Jin absolutely slumps down. Presumably passed out. It doesn't look like he's dead. And I don't think Kazuya thinks he's dead for sure. And he just says that. A fight's all about who's left standing, his classic line, and he turns his back to walk off. Which makes kind of no sense given the context earlier, where during the fight on Yakushima, Kazuya specifically told Nina to not kill Jin and that he will kill him himself. We'll slow down Jin Kazuma and draw out the rebel army. Then take them all out at Yakushima. I assume that's the plan? 
ジンは殺すな。俺が直接始末する。And that is what I thought to be a major plot hole, where, like, you know, they kind of retconned what he said. But the more I think about it, the more I realize this may not actually be a plot hole, but this may actually be intended. And the, you know, Kazuya Mishima, the whole character that we thought was kind of the comedic 2D villain, where it's like, haha, I'm evil. I don't think this is it. I think this is actually Bandai Namco, or maybe even Harada himself, trying to give some depth to the character. Let me explain. Now, before we can understand why Kazuya chose not to kill Jin, or rather, like why he didn't kill him, or like forgot to kill him, or like could not kill him, or, or whatever, you know, we need to understand Kazuya as a character. Now, ever since Tekken 1, he has been the poster boy,、uh, I guess, next to Jin ever since Tekken 3. And Kazuya's character is not really that complex of a character. All he really wants is just world domination, as we all know. And many of us think, the, especially the newer fans, they think this is like a,、uh, a stereotypical villain trope that they assign to Kazuya. But if you ask me, I actually think this is way more deep rooted in、uh, Kazuya's power struggle and internal power complex, be it a inferiority or superiority complex, if you want to compare him to Heihachi.、Uh, he, 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 he's, a, he's a pretty tragic character. Like, sure, he's evil, but I kind of sympathize with Kazuya. He got thrown off a cliff when he was like, what, five years old? Uh, he still had for a long time had the perception that Heihachi, his dad,、uh, he killed his mom, Kazumi Mishima, or Hachijo if you want to be specific. So, yeah, I, I honestly don't blame Kazuya for turning out to be the guy that he is. That may be an overstatement, considering that I am a very big Kazuya simp. But yeah, the guy just wants world domination, and that's about it. The only times we see him truly have personal hate or beef with anyone. Is with Heihachi because I guess that's what stemmed the whole wanting for world domination, all to the point of you know, selling his soul to the devil. Although they retconned that too, and、uh, now it's, it's in his gene. Yeah, I know, I know Tekken, Tekken is very weird. Tekken is very weird,、um, but bear with me. So, yes, now that we know that's, that's the only thing that Kazuya wants, and he has never really been shown to go out of his way to purposefully kill anyone unless it's in his way of getting more power and getting, you know. World domination. And we can clearly see this, like when in the first chapter, I forgot what the name was, but in the first chapter of Story Mode, where Jin rides his motorcycle and absolutely yeets it at Kazuya's helicopter, it comes crashing down. Kazuya is just coming out of the flames, you know, doing the good old mask pose and asking Jin Kazama, what do you want? He's not even like remotely pissed or like out here to kill him. In fact, if anything, it's, the, it's Jin who's the one that goes like, Omayo Koroshia. And then, and then, yeah, the whole fight happens. That alone, to me, kind of proves that Kazuya has never wanted to kill Jin now that I think about it. Even all the way back in Tekken 4, he just wanted Jin for his power, like、uh, his, the other half of his devil power. And、uh, yeah, in, in Tekken, like, Kazuya has never really been out to kill Jin ever since. It's always been Jin that wanted to you know, take Kazuya out of the world or defeat him. No, okay, now that I think about it, Jin, Jin has said that he wants to kill Kazuya plentiful of times in the story mode. And、uh, yeah, Kazuya just has never, has never had the same feeling towards Jin. And、uh, throughout the story mode, actually, you see Kazuya kind of just let Jin go about his day. He didn't confirm the kill after he lasered Devil Jin's ass into the sea, I assume. Or un- under some rubble, because Alisa kind of mentions about pulling Jin out of some rubble later down the line. Kazuya. Didn't even finish the kill, and that's that's very weird because we know Kazuya to be a very thorough person.、Uh, definitely, when it came to killing Heihachi, he didn't cut any corners there. He threw the he yeeted the man into an active volcano, and honestly, yeah, I, I believe Harada this time, Heihachi Mishima is absolutely dead. But he didn't confirm the kill with Jin, which is, which is kind of weird.、Uh, allows him to enroll into his tournament, by the way, and he doesn't do anything about it. The only time where he just shows up is when Leroy does the whole believe in your heart speech, and Kazuya is just、uh, stating his principles I don't believe in heart, there is only power, and strength is everything. 
But later on, you know, Jin, Jin obviously rebutes with a uh, strength isn't everything. But yeah, and uh, to top it all off, even during the time where Kazuya flew to Yakushima, I don't really think he was out there to get Jin. In fact, if anything, I just think he wanted to end the rebellion against uh, G Corp and I guess Kazuya's ruling of the world. In fact, the only time that Kazuya shows any form of hostility towards Jin is when, when he fights Jin. When Jin starts losing, then he starts taunting him like, uh, Is that all you can muster up from the blood I've given you? Or when he, you know, when he turns into Devil Jin and loses control, then Kazuya, you know, uh, taunts him for the fact that he let the devil take control. Yeah, those are the only time that Kazuya ever, you know, is, is mean or like, is hostile towards Jin. In fact, more the more I think about it, it's almost it's almost as if Kazuya expects something out of Jin. Like he he has expectations, which makes sense because you know at the end of the day, Jin Jin is a Mishima. He is Kazuya's son. So as as a father, maybe he has some expectations and you know has some respect for the will that Jin puts up. And this ties in perfectly with everything that has happened canonically throughout the Tekken story, all up until the point where they have that final fight on that rock again. And you know, it's a clash of fists, it's a clash of ideals, a clash of ideology, a clash of father and son. Which is now that I mention it sounds very poetic, but we have to remember that this is Tekken at the end of the day. I'm actually pretty amazed that the the base the base soup base soup what am i saying the <laughs> the base soup the the basis of the storyline is actually a pretty solid one and one that i can definitely get behind so coming back to this moment <laughs> Kazuya's expression here sure he mentioned that he wants to kill Jin earlier and sure he has you know done some pretty interesting things like murdering Claudio and uh, maybe even Zafina just to get in Jin's way but when it comes down to it this face many people speculate to be that of Kazuya being tired Kazuya being fed up or frustrated and while that may very well be the case the point is is that he hesitates here I don't think I've ever seen Kazuya hesitate when it came to killing someone he literally didn't hesitate throwing Heihachi off a cliff or into a volcano. He did it pretty naturally. But but here, he actually stops for a moment and, and look look at it. Look at him. To me, this is this is the face that kinda says like, oh shit, you know, I have to actually kill my son now. And I think this is the first moment where it dawns upon Kazuya that he actually has the proper choice to kill Jin here. And he he actually doesn't. He actually just chooses to, you know, knock him out. And if you're going to say that, you know, that, that punch, you know, my, 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 maybe Kazuya's tired too, you know, maybe he didn't actually finish the job. I, I highly doubt so. We have to remember, this is the man that killed Heihachi by punching him in the chest. I don't think Kazuya, you know, miss, miss punches and like punches too weak. Definitely not. You're going to accuse my boy of not being able to punch properly? Who the hell are you to say that? But anyways, yeah. There are many moments that even reinforce this where... Kazuya even admires Jin's ability to get up and keep fighting even though he's clearly losing. And even at one point we get this dialogue where he like electrics Jin in the in the gut and he says break damn you. He doesn't say die or like you know go to hell or anything like that. He just wants Jin to submit, you know. It's almost as if Kazuya himself doesn't want this brutal fight to go on any longer. And yeah, this is the only explanation that is clicking in my head. And as hard as as hard as it is to believe, I think this is canon. I, I think this is canon, and it's definitely a very interesting way to think about it. Uh, Kazuya is definitely a longtime favorite Tekken character of mine. It's actually interesting to see Bandai Namco give him an opportunity of development such as this. And honestly, maybe maybe the newer Tekken players won't agree with me. Maybe you all are. Jin Sims, you know, sucking Jin off every single day. I know you Jin mains out there definitely are. I mean, I'm kind of guilty of myself too. I'm a Jin main. But I think this is a step in the right direction. And given the ending for Kazuya, the good ending, definitely this is this is the Kazuya that I've always wanted to see. And uh, maybe we've gotten this character wrong from the very beginning. Honestly sets up an interesting premise for Tekken 9 if will ever reach I'm pretty sure we'll reach there one day I'm, I'm like what in my 20s as I'm recording this video who knows maybe by my 30s or 40s we'll see Tekken 9 and Tekken 10 and yeah but that's just a theory 
a game theory. Okay, that was kind of lame. <laughs> but yeah. And let me know what you guys think of uh, videos like this. I don't usually record these kind of videos, but it's been on my mind so much that I thought, why not give it a shot? Uh, definitely check it out if you have the time. Uh, this theory of mine. Feel free to give any rebuttals or any suggestions or anything that I might I might have missed that might in, uh, reinforce or you know rebuke the theory. And uh, feel free to check out my my personal playthrough of Tekken 8 Story Mode. I'll link it down in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.